Morning, welcome back. Did you know staying relevant as a celebrity is one of the toughest jobs you can have in the world, according to something I just made up. See how easy it is to lie on the internet? Sorry to all the doctors and brain surgeons I've offended with this comment, but at least your jobs will always be in demand. There's less of a chance of you having a flop era where no one cares about you anymore. I'll say it, job security and a steady income is way better than clout. You can't buy groceries with that. Working in the entertainment industry in this day and age, when everyone's conditioned to have the attention span of a a goldfish swimming in a bowl of Subway Surfer Family Guy TikToks. Keeping our attention has never been harder. You could lose relevancy in a few weeks for no reason, or by having one bad Twitter take in 2007. When big corporations are constantly pumping out industry plants, top it off with a hint of nepotism, losing your fame is just part of the natural life cycle of a famous person. So every once in a while, you'll need to do something different to catch everyone's attention again, like those cryptic status updates from people that love chaos. Okay, you got me hooked with the plotline, but what do you mean when you say, everything in my life is going wrong? Don't ask. I need context or I can't sleep. Rebranding yourself is a good way to keep people on their toes, especially with your appearance since that's often the first thing people will notice. You could start working out, eating healthy, change up your clothes and your makeup. Get a new face, swap out your jaw, chew off and swallow your buckle fat, an annual new face reveal is just something we're doing now. What better way to stay relevant than to swap out your old face for a new face with more horsepower and less mileage? Or is that a car? It seems like there's been a rise with male celebrities accentuating their jawline and other masculine features. Actually, it's not just male celebrities doing this. Leah Michelle did this too when she allegedly removed all the buckle fat in her cheeks to really show off her bone structure and well, it's really just bones. Thanks to this trend of buckle fat removal going viral on TikTok. Another face popped up recently that might have had the same treatment and maybe a little more. But first, let's go back to the early 2000s when One Direction was the biggest boy group in the world when they made their debut on X Factor. Well, technically they got put together like when a teacher picks random people for a group assignment, but the grip they had on the world was something else. Say one bad thing about them and you'd have to deal with directioners and their fingers that are really quick at typing insults. Just like how Liam Payne talked crap on Logan Paul's podcast. That's who we're talking about today. I think it was well known within the band that I don't like taking shit. And just like all musical groups that were forced together through a competition, this is a competition. A bit of tension, a few subtweets later, eventually the band split up and everyone went to do their own thing. When Liam made his first appearance on X Factor, for a teen in the early 2000s, he was conventionally attractive to all the fangirls. He's got that very boyish, cute looking face that all the young pop stars had at the time. A baby face, that's the term I'm looking for. As he got older, his face matured, but he still maintained that boy next door type of look. I feel that, like this is a 40 year old baby. Everything was normal until he showed up a few weeks ago looking drastically different. At the beginning of the year, he looked as he always did. Maybe lost some weight compared to previous years, but he did look the same. But then three months later, he shows up with a new jaw installation and who exactly is this? Hello, how are you? Hi. You alright? You look so nice. Man. Thank you, thank you. You're looking so well, so dapper. Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm so excited to be here. Um, we had a call yesterday. I was trying to surprise him actually by coming in, but I didn't know how I was going to get in otherwise. How important is it for you to be here to support Oh, Louis? massively. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Louis, out of everyone, they've, all the boys have been there for me, and I, I've, I've suffered a bit of a dark time in my life at the moment. And, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't be here without the boys, so, you know, uh, I'm so excited to see this. He's so passionate about what he does. It doesn't look terrible. If he's happy with this, then great. But it is very jarring to the public to have your whole face shape go from an oval to a pentagon in a quarter of a year. It's like when someone says, just slip into something a little bit more comfortable. But instead of sexy pajamas, they show up in a furry suit dancing to K-pop. Like, a heads up or a two weeks written notice would have been nice. Compared to a lot of mainstream male celebrities, Liam did have softer features. And if you've grown up in the past few decades, you might have a certain image of what the ideal face should look like for men, based on what's constantly shown in the media. While there are some outliers, softer features aren't always going to be the most appealing for men if they had a choice. He did try changing his image after leaving One Direction to something more mature. When the general public already has a certain image of you, breaking out from that is really hard. Just look at Miley Cyrus and what she had to do to separate her Disney image from her actual self. There's been some speculation. Liam's been wanting to get into acting, which could be why he decided to switch up his image. 
page. His new look started a whole discourse on this new face type we've seen popping up here and there. Hey, new face type just dropped. Some have even called it the handsome Squidward face. More and more celebrities are doing cosmetic procedures to enhance their jawlines. This also happened with Zac Efron, who used to be well known for his youthful boyish looks when he played Troy Bolton and High School Musical, which is sort of redundant to say since he was literally a youth. Teens literally worship High School Musical back in the day. Every time you walk past a drama class, you'd hear a pitchy rendition of We're All In This Together. I've never seen the movies, and for some reason, I know all the songs. So imagine spending years playing this teenage heartthrob in a series of Disney movies, and getting roles that were pretty much the exact same character with a slightly different personality. This image of you is gonna be burned into people's heads whether you meant for it to be or not. Until his face started maturing, as one does, and his jaw evolving into his final form. Zack mentioned that he also broke his jaw at one point, so he did have to get reconstructive surgery, which is why he looks the way he does. While content creators that are cosmetic surgeons speculate that he might have had a little bit more done. So make of that of what you will. Is it just me, or does the timeline seem kind of weird? After he got his jaw fixed, he still looks the way he typically does. Did he break his jaw again? Oh, I called you, Zach. You had some chin implants, jaw angle implants, those cheeks got some fillers, you got Botox. You didn't have those big of dimples. Some people have speculated that Zac Efron has had fillers to his jawline or chin, but you know fillers are liquid and there's no way you can get this kind of contour and volume with the liquid. You need something that's more like bone, so I'm certain he's had surgical implants placed. If you look at the left lip corner here, it's not moving as well, and that's something you expect with surgery. As he got older, he started to take on more mature roles, like Baywatch, which is about buff lifeguards, a Ted Bundy documentary, and Iron Claw, which is a new wrestling movie he's been working on. As handsome as he looks, he can't play a teenager forever, although we do have the typical Hollywood 30-year-old playing a high schooler like it's nothing. It wouldn't be that surprising if he did change his looks to get specific roles he wanted to play. People are going to have a hard time believing a innocent blue-eyed baby faces beating up people in a wrestling ring. There's actually a term in the film industry called the female gaze and the male gaze. It always sounds LGBT when I say it, but that's not what we're talking about here. Where a piece of media is made through the eyes of a specific gender and caters itself towards that demographic. So like superhero movies where the main character is male, will skew towards males being the bigger audience. This handsome Squidward face is guys making themselves more appealing to the male gaze. We got strong jawlines, prominent cheekbones with no buckle fat in sight unless you're a side character. It's basically like taking the slider when you're making a sim and putting it all the way to the right. In an everyday setting, you'll see a face that sits somewhere in the middle of feminine and masculine. In East Asia, the male beauty standard is a little different. There isn't a huge desire to have the most masculine chat face you can achieve. The emphasis is more about balancing hard and soft features while still looking masculine and clean cut. They still want to see a well-defined jawline, but it has to be softer so it doesn't make your face any bigger. Instead of jaw implants, they'll opt for something called jaw shavings or filler to define the jawline without making it bigger and to make the face smaller, which doesn't always have the best results. Chinese are obsessed with having a V-shaped face. Some use bandages to wrap their face, some use plastic surgery to correct their jawbone, but some went overboard and things got strange. Wu Xuan Yi's chin is sharper than a knife. When she pulled on glittery makeup, it reminded me of the silver horn from Journey to the West. Tai Xu Kun's pointed chin make him look much more handsome, but then his chin just got longer and longer. Sometimes men can be more relentless than women when it comes to conforming to beauty standards. So did you guys notice? Everyone's faces are going in the opposite direction. Asian celebs are getting longer, while Hollywood celebs are getting wider. It's all because of these crazy beauty standards each culture created. What's next? Diagonal faces, probably. Since cosmetic surgery is available to anyone that has money, the Ken doll has become an inspiration for a lot of guys that want to look masculine and feminine at the same time. These dolls were made to appeal to young girls. They look youthful, cute, with smooth doll skin, all packaged into a chiseled, angular jaw. And people are literally trying to replicate how this doll looks on themselves with plastic surgery. I'm Justin Jedlicka, I'm 32 years old, and I'm a living doll. Ask a daddy. 
I've had 125 procedures. So the doll really exemplifies sort of the ideal male aesthetic. Is it ideal if you have to get over 100 surgeries to look like a doll, which isn't even humanly possible? Definitely not an ideal Friday night for me. I have my entire jaw line reconstructed, three nose jobs. I have permanent fillers on my chin, in my cheeks to give more of a chiseled look, in my nasal fold and in my lips as well. Stem cells hair growth treatment, silicone implants in my chest. I have had four liping suctions. I have the most perfect six pack. I realized that I had a liking for some more exaggerated features and this ideal male physique, you know, a little bit more like a doll, like a, like a hero, you know, this like tiny waist and this large upper body. See, what I say about superheroes with these body proportions and facial features. When people see enough of something in the media that's considered desirable, the seeds are going to be planted and they're going to want to start looking like this too. This is just a hunch, but I feel like he's not going to star in a wrestling movie or jump out of a moving vehicle anytime soon. This is literally all just for aesthetics and vibes, I guess. Eu sou Junior Baby Lacqua, sou o novo quem humano brasileiro e eu já investi no meu corpo 80 mil dólares. Eu já perdi a conta de quantas cirurgias eu já fiz. Tudo em busca do visual perfeito. Mandíbula várias vezes. It's crazy how people can have such different experiences with money. 80k? Might as well put a down payment on your house made of glass. His jaw was already pretty well defined before getting surgery, but now he looks like he hops straight out of a comic book and into a gym in Brazil. Yeah, I'm nervous for these people and their facial structure. Your body can only handle so many cosmetic procedures before something goes wrong. Happy for them, but nervous mostly. While this video got progressively more insane the more we talked about this topic, all I have to say after watching all this, a few jaw exercises and a little bit of gua sha will be good enough for me. It's definitely interesting when public figures start changing their image right in front of our eyes like a Pokemon evolution. What are we gonna see next? Like these people are definitely gonna have some blood on their gua sha. If you enjoyed this observation, give this video a like. Every time the YouTube algorithm gets fed engagement, my next video will get plopped right into your recommended. I have an Instagram you can follow, same name, have a good one, try not to be dumb, and see you in the next one.